Aloha and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. As you know, I like to showcase our local artists here in Hawaii, and today is one of those days. My guest today resides on the Big Island and began playing music at the age of 14. He studied with legendary saxophonist Bill Green and has played in numerous bands in and around LA. He attended the University of California at Los Angeles and began his professional career working with many big names in the music industry, including Ray Charles, Donna Summer, Bob Marley and the Wailers, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, Bonnie Ray, and legendary jazz musician Horace Henderson. This is just to name a few. Let's find out more about this artist and welcome Mr. Jeff Gates to the show. Aloha, Jeff. How are you? I'm great. Aloha, Gwen. How are you doing? I am well. Thank you so much for being on the show. As you, I, I love to showcase our local artists because I don't think you guys get what you deserve, you know, for people to know. So you tell us, how did you get, um, get into playing music? Oh, interesting story. Uh, <laughs> I won't go too far into this, but uh, you, you know, when you're in second, third grade and you take a music aptitude test <laughs> and I failed uh -oh. and I wanted to play so badly. So I never played. My brother picked up the clarinet in, oh, probably when I was 12 and I just picked it up and started playing it, no lessons, and uh, kind of surpassed him at that point, a little bit. Decided I wanted to play saxophone. So at 14, I got a saxophone and um, took private lessons. Didn't go into the school band uh, initially because I was just learning. And then uh, a year later, I got into the school band and went forward to that, a couple years there, and then I was out of high school. That got wow. me going. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that got me going. So um from there, um bought a one way ticket to LA. I lived in upstate New York. Wow. Two weeks after I graduated from high school. Hundred dollars in my pocket that was given to me by a friend, by the way. And uh my horn and uh a suitcase. Had a friend in LA and I said I'm coming. And I showed up at the airport. I'd never been to LA before. Showed up wow. at the airport. I was still 17, wasn't quite uh -huh. 18 at that point. And um, just got into the scene, kind of, you know, tried to hang around the right people, stay out of trouble, which I managed to do. That you managed to do? <laughs> wow. So you just picked up, you just picked up upstate New York yep. with $100 in your pocket and just went to LA. Right. I did. And you know, when you're that age, you're fearless. And <laughs> yes. I was fearless. Uh, I do remember sitting in Chicago at O'Hare in the air, airplane and going, what have I done? Okay. All right. Yeah. This is cool. <laughs> wow. Now you played, you were in LA, of course, mm -hmm. and you played with some of the, the biggest names in industry. And, and you know, I named some of them, Donna Summer, right, right. Um, Bob Marley. I was just a, that was a happenstance at the Roxy in Hollywood. And, um, you know, these these gigs all come about not because anybody knows who you are, mm -hmm. but it's all due to networking. So right. when, you, when you network, um, my goal was was to study with uh, the best players that I could. OK, and so to kind of back up a little bit, I joined the Musicians Union, Local 47 Hollywood. And now I got a book and I got a lot of names and a lot of these names in this book in that time, they had their home address, they had their home phone number. Wow. So um, the first guy I called literally was Ronnie Laws. Okay, called, yes. I called uh -huh. Ronnie Laws at his house, his wife answered. And uh, because I had just seen him at the lighthouse in Redondo Beach, I thought I, I need to, I need to talk to this guy. Remember, I just turned 18 at this point, so yeah, I didn't know anything. Um, he was so nice to me, absolutely so nice to me. I interrupted his dinner. But from there, basically what happened was, is I, uh, I was, he, he referred me to a couple other guys that were teaching. One was John Clemmer. And I thought, oh, okay, I didn't know who these guys were. 
So I look, you know, looked him up as much as you can back then. There was no internet, of course and listened to the local jazz station and I found him on there and studied a little bit with him and moved on to another teacher in between gigs. And so what happens is, is you network. And when you're working, when you're studying with someone, if you're good enough, they'll use you as a sub. And so that was my goal is to become a sub. And so I became a sub. And uh, when my instructors couldn't do the gig, they would call me. And so pretty soon you get to know these people and the object was, was to get in everybody's book. You wanted to be a guy that showed up on time, a guy that did it in first take if you could. Everything that you could possibly do to keep the job and to get the next one. And so that was my goal really. And so it just kind of springboarded from there. You know, I talked to some guys. Um, I remember talking to Al Garth, uh, who used to play with Kenny Loggins and, Joe, and Jim Messina. And I remember calling him up and saying, you know, I was thinking of going on out on the road with those guys. And he goes, don't do it. Don't do it. They're they're ready for a breakup right now. Uh, they're probably not going to like this if they hear this. <laughs> but uh, he, 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 strongly tell all, tell all. I, he strongly recommended that I don't go. I had a uh -huh. few of those too. But in those days, you know, you take everything that you could possibly do. And, um, and that's basically how it worked. You know, the wow. Ray Charles thing was I was living in Colorado. I moved out there for a short period of time, had a house out there, called up a friend of mine. He said, yeah, Ray's uh, auditioning on Sunday. Get here. So uh, that's how these gigs come about. So even uh, with uh, Michael Jackson and Miss Diana Ross, right. two of them. Right. That, that particular thing was a special she was doing. But again, I was with Local 47 and they use union mm -hmm. musicians. Mm -hmm. So we are union musicians. And if you look at that special, sometimes you can see me. I had much more hair. Well, and, I think I'm going to go back and look for it now. <laughs> but uh, it was a special on CBS called Diana. Anyways, this was like in 1981. Okay. Uh -huh. Just before Michael was really getting rolling, of course. And... Um, so yeah, that's how those gigs come about, you know, word of mouth. And so I encourage all the young people, you know, even though um, we don't get in people's books these days, it's social mm -hmm. networking. Now you, yes. want, you want to, to get involved that way with as many players as possible. Yes. And well, how did you, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah. How did you, how did, what brought you to Hawaii? <laughs> brought me to Hawaii is, well, my wife and I, have, we have two children mm -hmm. who have grown up. Our parents have long passed away. We've taken care of them. We looked at each other and said, now what? Um, and uh, we said, let's just sell everything and move to the big island. And uh, most people thought we were crazy. <laughs> I like to tell people, I, I, actually, I tell everybody this. I didn't move to the big island to start a career. Mm -hmm. I came here to end one, actually. <laughs> Uh, but once I moved here, I started, I had all this time because I was mm -hmm. basically retired, I had all this time and uh, I was composing and writing and I thought, well, I need to put together a studio here. So I started putting together a studio and writing and composing and uh, that um, my 2008 release Paradise Park, that, that was basically the result of that. And so at that point, it was like, well, people might want to hear this. So I started playing locally. And, um, and then I got a lot of uh, attention um, in Europe, actually. Um, they seem to like, the UK really seems to enjoy my tune. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. They've given me a lot of uh, publicity that way. And that's basically how, you know, it just kind of morphed into this, into that. And... Every time I do a project, they say it's going to be the last one. The last one I did um, was, what, six years ago. And, um, you know, with this COVID thing going on and no live music, um, there was Art. nothing else to do but sit in the studio and write lousy tune after lousy tune until you find <laughs> something that you like. <laughs> I think any composer out there could, could relate to that. Now, what is your favorite genre of music to play? What is your favorite? Oh, favorite. I like, I like everything from chamber music up to smooth jazz, straight ahead. Um, I'm more geared, though, to what I compose these days. So mm -hmm. 
it, it's it's smooth, but it's not. Uh, I don't know if I fit really into a specific genre uh, mm. because um, I would say 15 years ago, I decided that whatever I was going to do, it was going to be original. So if, if I'm going to play out, it's going to be my tunes. And if nobody likes them and nobody wants to hear them, I won't play out anymore. That was where I was at. So everything I do now when I go out is my original material. And um, I have to say here on the Big Island, I've just had a wonderful, wonderful response. Really? To, uh, to and, you know, and I can't thank the audience enough. The fact that you can actually go out, play live, people come in to hear your original material. And we're, we're nothing better than that. that for an artist. There really is nothing better than that. So. Yes. Well, hopefully once all this COVID and stuff is done, we can uh, get you over here to Oahu. I would love it. Yeah. Because sure we, we, yeah. we need you over here in Oahu. Well, um, I know there's a lot of guys over there that are uh, uh, waiting to go to work too, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep, yep. There's some great players over there. Yes, they are. Um, now you talked about what exactly have you been doing during this COVID besides writing Besides writing music, what else oh, have you been doing? Sure, sure. Well, I do have a day job. Okay. And I, and I work for the county of okay. Hawaii. And I work with the kupuna. Ah. Through, you know, through parks and recreation. And so we assist them with information and assistance and uh, transportation to and from, doctor's appointments, uh, basically anything that someone who's a shut-in primarily mm -hmm. uh, essential uh, we will we'll help. You know, if somebody needs some assistance with their health insurance, we'll assist them with that. If they need, if they're hungry, we'll assist them with the local food basket basket program over here. So we're basically community community service workers. So we're in the community. Whatever need they have, we try to fill that need. If not, we will refer them. Oh, okay. All right. That's well. What I do. We have to go on a quick break, sure. but we'll be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection, where we are speaking with Mr. Jeff Gay over on the Big Island. Jeff, now tell me, we talked about your career, what you know, how how you got into music, and we talked about your career. But tell me, who would you, anybody that's dead or alive, who would you like to collaborate with oh, on a project? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I've always really admired Keiko Matsui. Mm. Really love her composing. Mm -hmm. um, and she's really the total package. I really, really do. There's so many, many great players uh, mm -hmm. out there. Um, it's really hard to nail it down. Um, I've worked with so many different generations of players. Um, it's really tough, but she's someone I've always admired. Um, Boney James, great player, mm. ran into some physical issues, uh, almost stopped playing, um, mm. and is back with a vengeance. So, you know, wonderful to see that. Wow. Well, you know, speaking into fruition, it might happen one day. You never know. You never know. You, you, right. ne <laughs> you never know. Now let's talk about your albums. Okay. So in 2005, you did Trade Secrets. 
2008, you did Paradise Park. 2011, you did Shoestrings, which is my favorite album. And that album received in 2011 a Nahuku Hano Hano Award nomination. But in 2012, it won the Big Island Music Award. Hmm. Yeah. Your, latest, your latest album is Portrait. So tell us about that. Portrait. Basically, you know, each album is different. It's a mm -hmm. collaboration. It's basically a... Col a collaboration of where I'm at at that point in my life. Um, and that's how they come about. Uh, I never really know what's going to happen. I, I don't write for any specific person, any specific genre. I, it's just, this is what's happening. And that's how this particular, that's how all the albums actually have come out. You know? Wow. So. Well, will you play for us today? Will you play for us now? Sure. I'd be happy to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I will play something new. Okay. New that's not already released yet. So this will okay. be out on my next album. And this wow. is titled Catnip. Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Thank you so much. Yeah. I okay. Yeah. I don't know. That was awesome. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much for playing. You know, I'm just here grooving like I always do. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So now with you said that's going to be on your new album. Right. Coming up. And it's and yes. it's called Catnip. So I'm going to be looking for that one so I can play it on my radio show. But, <laughs> but so what much. other <laughs> what other projects, if any, do you have coming up or any, I know it's kind of hard with the COVID and everything right, right. Um, to do performances and shows, but I know a lot of entertainers and performers are like booked into 2021. Right. Do you have anything um, coming up on the Big Island or anywhere? Locally here, yes. Uh, we're just waiting. waiting Once again, yes. we're just waiting until things open up. Some of the clubs have opened up, but they're not, uh, they've got singles mm -hmm. right now, you know, just someone, ukulele, that sort of thing, uh, guitar and vocal. Um, right now, the bands are not happening. So we're in a holding pattern. Just like we are over, just yep. like we are over here yep, yep, yep. On, on Oahu. So one thing that I want to ask is, what advice would you give a new artist coming into the in industry? Ah, oh, new artist. Well, like we had talked before, social mm -hmm. networking is really a key because you can reach worldwide. Mm -hmm. You can be some guy sitting in his studio at home. Here we are. And, uh, you know, we can reach out to, you know, I hear pe from people from the UK, from Japan, out in Germany, Australia, um, and then, of course, the US mainland, that sort of thing. And that's basically how I found you. Uh, <laughs> and so I recommend, you know, use the social media. Um, if you're an up and coming player, find, find a, a teacher. It right. doesn't matter how much you think, you know, find a mm -hmm. teacher, especially someone that is much better than you. And I do recommend that for anybody upcoming, the people that they, you, you hang out with, they always want to be better players than yourself. That's how you get better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's basically what I recommend. Just networking, get your tunes out there. And always be ready to go. Whether mm. you're playing, you're playing a little gig at the the Elks Club, or you've got Carnegie Hall coming up, it's the same gig. And always be prepared. Wow, That's, that was always been my motto. Now, where can people go to look you up to find out? You have a website. Oh. You want to give them your website where they can find you? Certainly, yeah. It's jeffgaith.com. So www.jeffgaeth.com. And they can find out um, anything else that they'd be interested in. Um, there's samples of all my albums on there and they can make purchases if they like. We're on Pandora and Spotify and, and all of the streaming services. So you can find me out there. I'm yes, there. you can, because I found it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you Thank can. You. Well, I thank you so much for agreeing, you know, to do the interview. Oh, I am just so happy um, to interview again our local artists because not too many people know, right. you know, know about you. Right. And and my goal is to I want people to know about you, you know. Well, so kind of you, and thank you for giving Big Island a voice. Oh yes, yeah. most. Definitely, most definitely. Again, thank you so much for being on the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. And I will definitely be in touch with you, most definitely. Most definitely. Aloha, and Gwen. Thank you. Aloha. To my viewers, thank you for tuning in. And until next time, aloha and God bless.